Hey everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Trinity Stamps video. Today we're going to be making two slimline cards and we're going to be using these cool products. This first one is the best place to be stamp. We're just going to be using a couple from there, but you could um, use different stamps that you might have if you don't have that one. We're also going to be using the Tall Tales stamp. I love this giant giraffe. And then we're going to be using the Slimline Tall Heart Trio die along with some 9x4 Winter Hues paper. That is slimline paper. Perfect. And then we also have the slimline envelope die along with the add-on die because we're going to make two different kinds of envelopes. Or at least I'll show you those at the end using some specialty paper. All right, let's jump right into it. I've got some Express It cardstock inside of my Misty. This will work perfectly. I mean, look at how big that giraffe is. So I'm going to stamp it a couple of times using some Ink on 3 Blackout Ink, which is perfect for alcohol marker coloring. I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring and I'll show you an easy way to color this giraffe which might seem a little bit daunting if you look at one how big he is and how many spots he has. So let's let's just get right into it. Instead of while coloring this giraffe going around each of those spots on him we're going to just color right over the top of all of them. Because Alcohol markers are transparent in nature. They layer on top of each other quite beautifully. So I'm starting with my lightest color. This is a Y26. It's almost like a mustardy type color. And I'm, like I said, just gonna color over the entire thing. And then we're even gonna do our shading with our yellows right over the top of this as well. I'm not concerned about the spots at this point. And you could do this with any colors on the giraffe. Like, let's say you wanted to color him pink and purple. You know, have his, as long as his skin color is, or, you know, his background skin color is lighter than his spots, or her spots, <laughs> you could absolutely do this. So I'm bringing in the midtone, which is some YR24, just adding some shadowing and shading where I think it might be. This will sort of disappear just a little bit once we finally start coloring those spots, but it's, it's something and it's in the background. Then I bring in the YR27, and then I'm going to work backwards and blend that out using the YR24, and then... Um, I don't think I bring in the Y26 back again, but you know, this way we've got some not super dramatic, but we definitely have some color going on there where the shadowing and shading might be. All right, now we'll move on to his spots. So I'm going to start with some E37. That's going to be my lightest shade, and I'm going to do that on his feet too. But you see how nicely this warm brown goes right over the top of that, those Ys and those YRs? All I'm going to do is just fill in those colors. And I do love how the yellow underneath kind of just really keeps that brown nice and warm. Uh, so that's how simple it is as far as using your alcohol markers. If you wanted to watercolor, you would probably have to go around each of the spots. I mean, you could you know, absolutely do it this way, but the colors are going to blend a little bit differently. Uh, so for alcohol markers, this is great. So my point is, don't be intimidated by just how big he is and how his spots are and the little spaces in between each of the spots. Just, you know, have fun. Color him how you'd like to. Uh, like I said, I actually want to try to color him with maybe some pinks and purples or even different, like, blues or, oh my gosh, how fun would that be if you did, oh, uh, you know, I don't, I, yeah, maybe I'll surprise y'all with some, some different ways to color him because I have some ideas in my head right now as we go through this voiceover. Um, he is just super, super cool. So, all right, and then we'll finish up now just bringing in our darker tone, which is an E59. And I'm going to just kind of put some shadowing and shading more to towards the lower left-hand side of each of the spots. Uh, and I'm not going to blend it out either. You could, if you thought that was a little too dramatic for you, you could come back in with your E37 and blend that out. But I'm going to leave it as is. I want that to be just a little bit dramatic. I think that's really pleasing to the eye. And look at how quickly I was able to just completely do those spots. I'll even put just like a small line next to his neck along the hair. And that's going to do it for him. I do come back and finish his feet. I didn't do that in this part. But I will fix his, fix the little hooves of, of this little giraffe. And uh, so there. All right, now we'll move on to coloring our flowers. I stamped those out a bunch of times. Didn't show you that on camera. But it was the same concept as earlier. We just stamped out four of those 
and two of the little birds because like I said we're going to be making two slimlines. I want each of these to have two sets of flowers and one bird. And you'll notice with my colors I started with some V06 and then came in with some RV09 and that is quite dramatic but honestly I love that. So I'll come back in with that V05 and blend just a little bit just to soften those edges a tiny bit and that is really really helpful. I'm going to use some very light greens which we have some G21 for all the leaves almost almost uh, hard to see on this video and then we bring in some G94 just to add a little bit of darkness and I will blend that out a tiny bit. We'll bring in the YR24 for the centers and for the bird's beak and then we're going to color the bird with some B. So we got B60 and actually V25 those match really well together. I didn't want this bird to stand out too much but I wanted them to kind of match with the backgrounds that I chose. And now that all of the coloring is done, we're going to go ahead and match up our dies and we'll run this through our die cutting machine. You'll notice I tried to stamp out the sentiment. I think it was the stamp block I was using that didn't work. So we will restamp those. Uh, but again, just taping down all of our matching dies over the top of each of our images and we'll run that through our die cutting machine. And we'll have to do that a few times since we have quite a few of the images. But I do love how that flower will cut out little pieces in between. So it just gives you this really beautiful cut out stamped image. I'm going to stamp the sentiment from the best place to be twice and it might be a little bit long for uh, the slim line the way we're going to have it but we are going to trim it down into three sections and it's actually super easy. Here you'll see I went ahead and cut out of those winter hues paper I cut out from two and we're going to intertwine those hearts. We're going to you know use the white hearts with the purple paper and vice versa. Our card bases were cut down to seven inches by eight and a half inches and I'm now going to score those at three and a half inches and those will fit our panels perfectly but check out that embossed edge and the stitching. That is so classy in my opinion. I love that and it also gives the embossed edge to the hearts that it cuts out. It's just those little details that just get me I tell you and it's no extra effort. All right, I do have to put a little something on the inside, as you know me. So I went ahead and stuck my card base into my Misty. It fits just perfectly. And then I'm going to ink up our little giraffe with some Bee Sting Yellow from Ink on 3. And this is just an easy way to put a little something on the inside without a whole lot of effort. So I'll do that with both. Then I'm going to bring the flower in. We're going to ink that up with some Sweet Petunia Pink. And then our little bird is going to be some My Jam Purple. And then because I am pretty much out of birthday cards, I'm going to bring in the Just For You stamp. And we're just going to stamp Happy Birthday on the inside. Um, so yeah, definitely need some birthday cards. <laughs> just inking that up with our blackout ink. And I'll do that for both as well. Now it's time for some assembly. We're going to just use some liquid glue to adhere down our card panel. You could pop this part up with some foam tape and then inlay your hearts and it would just be really, really pretty that way as well. I wanted to make this a super easy mailer, so I'm going to glue everything down. We're not going to use any foam tape this time. I know it's kind of shocking, but I'm putting the glue there on the inside and then we'll grab the white striped hearts. I think that matches so perfectly. And then that part will be done and now we just need to kind of arrange the rest of our pieces and here I'm going to trim down this sentiment into three places so it's going to be three parts we've got together is and it's super easy to trim down but I do love that Trinity Stamps has these dies for your sentiments because it cuts around them just so beautifully it's it's one of my favorite things about the sentiments all right, and now we'll just start doing more assembly with the glue. So I'll glue down the pieces that are going to be in the background. So we've got one little sprig of flowers at the top. We've got this second one that's going to be holding our little bird on the right hand side. But you see what I mean about that die just cutting around the flowers and the leaves so nicely. And then we'll glue down our giraffe on top. Again, I kind of debated maybe using some foam tape, but I wanted this to be a super easy mailer. So I'm going to use some glue on him as well, stick him right down, and then also with our bird. But I just love that giraffe. I actually made a bookmark out of the giraffe uh, for a niece of mine, and I just laminated it, and it was perfect. So, all right, now we'll glue down our sentiments. So I like how that works together is, and then we have the best place to be. And that really took no effort just trimming those apart. 
Now we've got to flip it over and trim off all of the excess. I do like to sometimes have my pieces go off the edge of the paper. It gives the illusion that there's more going on. And then I'm going to finish off the second card basically the same way. So here they are all finished. I love how these turned out. I'll also show you the envelopes that we made using some of that tonic silver Shakur specialty paper. But here are the cards. Uh, and for one of the envelopes, we have a top opening envelope. And that one just uses the slimline envelope die. And then the second one is a side opening card, which uses both the slimline envelope die and the slim slimline envelope add-on. So you can make your envelopes either way. So if you liked this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you have not already done so. And check out all that Trinity Stamps has going on on our Facebook page, the Instagram, our blog, and just at the store in general. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.